All right, tips. So we are back, of course, with some Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Today we have an interview with Cody Christian, who, of course, is the voice actor for Cloud Strife in Final Fantasy VII Remake. And this is another interview with comicbook.com, who, of course, did the interview with Britt Baron, the voice actor for Tifa, that we looked at relatively recently. Speaking of that video, I actually had somebody comment on it that was, like, seemingly upset that we were doing a Tifa voice actor interview instead of, like, somebody else like Jesse, which I've actually already done as well. And when it came to that particular interview, that's the first one I've ever seen of Britt Baron in regards to Remake. It might not be the first one, but it's the first one I've ever seen, so that's part of why we covered it. But also I had a lot of interesting things to talk about. And same thing here, like, Cody Christian voices Cloud, who is, you know, the main character of Final Fantasy VII and Remake. And this is the first interview I've personally ever seen of him in regards to Remake. Now with this particular interview, for starters, it's surprisingly short, especially when you compare it to the Tifa video. Like the Tifa interview that we did, it's a really long video, like 13 or 14 minutes, which is a lot longer than we normally do. And there's just a shit ton of questions, she gave really long answers. This one's actually pretty short in comparison. But within this particular interview, he talks a lot about Steve Burton, which I think a lot of the people that are like diehard OG voice actor fans will appreciate. Like he gives a lot of homage to Steve Burton, the you know the original Cloud voice actor. And they also ask him to design his own limit break for Cloud, and it turns out he's actually already thought up one. He already has one in mind, but it's actually pretty underwhelming, and we'll get to that when we get to that part of the interview. But of course, let's just hop right into it. In preparing for the audition, the first piece of reference material I used was the depiction of Cloud in Advent Children. Watching this and hearing Steve Burton's interpretation of the character rooted a lot of my reimagining of the character tonally. Since Cloud has never officially been voiced in the original Final Fantasy VII before, I wanted to ensure my performance captured what fans were already accustomed to, while breathing a new essence into the character to both pay homage and pave a new way for fans moving forward. I never actually played the original game, but I have watched through the gameplay on YouTube. Cloud as a character is very rich and complex. There's an abundance of emotional layers to explore and portray. We forget that this is still a kid, a human, with the very human thoughts and experiences in this fantasy world. As an actor, it's a joy to depict such a character. So the first thing that stuck out to me here was that he actually used Advent Children and Steve Burton's interpretation of Cloud as sort of a starting off point, whereas with the Britt Baron interview with Fertifa, she actually mentions that you know she wanted to do her own interpretation entirely. She didn't want to try to do what a previous voice actress did. I thought it was very interesting that he wanted to do a Cloud that was relatively familiar to people who've heard Cloud talk before, but also kind of do his own interpretation, of course. But uh, whether or not he sounds like the Cloud from Avid Children to you guys, I, I don't know. I guess that's up for debate or what, personal, whatever. I don't personally see it or hear it. I think he sounds very different and much better. Christian was stepping into some big shoes taking over for Burton, but Burton shared a sweet message on social media when it was announced in a true Passing the Torch moment, which we actually talked about whenever we did like a video a long time ago about people that were upset about the new voice actors. I'll play a clip of his video really quickly. Uh, this is a door opening for uh, a new cast of Final Fantasy. I'm sure they're going to be incredible. I know Cody Christian's going to give it everything he's got, so uh, I'm wishing the best uh, to him and to the rest to the cast. It was very much a symbolic passing of the torch. I have nothing but wonderful things to say about Mr. Burton and how much of a class act he is. This man let go of a character he essentially birthed and welcomed me with open arms. He vouched for me and encouraged the fan base to trust me to carry on the legacy of Cloud Strife. I really hope I get the chance to meet him and personally thank him. He has no idea how much this meant to me and how much confidence he inadvertently gave me when I so desperately needed it. And this is kind of the narrative that I've been trying to get across for over a year at this point. Like at the end of the day, Steve Burton's the guy that originally voiced Cloud. He understands shit happens. There's a new cast now. He he gave his blessing. He's fine with it. Like I, it doesn't make any sense to be upset when the guy who voiced Cloud originally is not upset. But jumping back to this interview, it's really cool to see how much that passing the torch moment meant to Cody Christian. Like this is his predecessor. This is the guy that's been voicing Cloud Strife for almost two decades at this point. And for him to instill that confidence in Cody Christian to like you know portray Cloud to a newer generation is pretty cool. As for his take on Cloud, much of what Burton built served as the foundation. Though Christian also added his own flavor to certain aspects of the character. His portrayal of the character nailed so many things, therefore, a lot of what he did I used as inspiration. He captured a guarded hero plagued by his past trauma, scared to love, and connect as he once did before, desperately, like most of us, seeking his own sense of self and identity. One major component I felt necessary to explore was vulnerability. I wanted to humanize Cloud a bit in this game and bring life to the very real feelings and emotions this young man experiences. So again, here we have Cody Christian giving props to Steve Burton for his interpretation of Cloud and kind of using that as the foundation for his version. But also why I like this part is it shows that he knows the character of Cloud. He talks about, you know, hero plagued by past trauma, doesn't want to connect with people, trying to find his own identity and shit like that. Like, he knows who Cloud is. Like, he, even though he's never played the game, he still understands the character. I think that's important. One of the most memorable sequences from the remake has to be the Honeybee Inn, which has Cloud learning to dance and performing on stage in a delightful scene that is also ridiculously fun to play. Christian didn't get a chance to contribute any dance moves, but he's itching to get the chance next time around. I saw a very early version of this spectacular Honeybee Inn dance before the release. When we were recording, they had an animation render for about 20 seconds of the dance. 
Seeing the more than 6 minute sequence come to life in the game was spectacular. They didn't give me the opportunity to contribute any moves, but I'll be fighting for that chance if there's a next time. So I never really thought about who's doing the mocap for the dance scene of Cloud when it came to the remake. I never assumed it was Cody Christian, but I just never really thought about it. But it's interesting that he would like to do that in the future, like if there's ever another opportunity for Cloud to dance in the game. And the only thing I can think of is if we get to come back to Midgar in future games and we get to go back to Walmart and we get to go to Honeybee Inn and there's like a new dance sequence for, different from the original, like maybe he could contribute there. Cloud is quite closed off and standoffish at the beginning of the story, though he does open up quite a bit as he interacts with everyone throughout the game. So we had to ask if that type of character is more challenging to play as opposed to someone completely open from the start. Playing a character complexity is any actor's dream. I wanted to humanize Cloud as much as possible and create an empathetic dialogue slash connection between him and the player. I want to emphasize that amidst saving the planet and being a badass soldier, Cloud is still a young man seeking his own identity. Burned by trauma in the past, his standoffishness can be seen more as a defense mechanism. Often those that are closed off from the world have a reason to be. Exploring this life in Cloud really shaped the character. Although a bit more challenging to depict, Cloud's emotional journey throughout the game was one of the most fulfilling aspects. He has quite the story to tell and I'm humbled I was able to partake in telling it. So again, I think that part of the interview is a good showing that he understands the character of Cloud, but also like that he, he enjoys doing a character that's complex. Like he doesn't do, want to do a one-note character. He wants a character that has a different range of emotions. And to be honest, when it comes to Final Fantasy VII, pretty much all the characters have a range of emotions. They're not necessarily one-note characters. The only thing I can think of is like some of the bad guys, like Scarlet's pretty much one-note, Palmer's pretty one-note, Heidegger's pretty one-note. But then you have the other bad guys, like the Turks, like Reno and Ruder. You know, they got a range of emotions. They're not entirely bad. They're mostly bad, but you can tell that they don't want to do some of the shit sometimes. While Tifa might have had the greatest impact, Aerith is a huge part of Cloud's journey, and one of the classic scenes from the original is brought to life in stunning fashion in the remake. That would be the conversation between Cloud and Aerith on the playground, and it's stunning to see this beloved moment brought to life with modern visuals, though it's the small things that really give the scene life. Again with the detail, it's truly incredible to see the difference between the original and the remake. With the updated graphics and voice acting, you're able to be a part of the story in ways like never before. Additionally, I feel there's a much stronger emotional connection to the game due to these immersive qualities. In this scene, Aerith shows the Cloud who her first love was. This triggers a painful flashback of insight Cloud has been experiencing throughout the game. I feel this scene echoes a feeling of safety, understanding, and encouragement of vulnerability seen countless times between Aerith and Cloud. And I absolutely have to agree with that entire part. Like That's one of my favorite things about Remake is seeing these iconic moments that we all know and remember from the original game being interpreted with modern technology, graphics, voice acting, and everything. And that's why I cannot wait for the sequels, man. That's why we talk about Part 2 all the time. I cannot wait to see some of these iconic moments you know, further into the story. And the one I always reference, the one I always talk about when we talk about this shit, is the dying scene. There are a few moments in Remake that got me a little bit choked up. Obviously, the main one is like the Jesse death scene. That's just kind of the power of, you know, voice acting and better visuals. And this is the scene right here. Bear and Diane talking in Crow Prison. I want this scene to rip out my fucking heart, dude. I want to just, I just want to ball. I just want to cry. There are a lot of important moments in Final Fantasy VII. Probably more important than this one. But this is the one that I hope they just, I hope they do it perfectly, man. And this right here is the underwhelming limit break part. So let's just read over it. Before we left, we had to ask Christian to design his own limit break, and he already had the idea locked and loaded. Crazy how I've already thought of this. My limit break would be called Now You See Me, and would involve Cloud dealing quick, devastating blows in rapid succession, so fast it appears like he's teleporting until he suddenly disappears. And after a brief moment, he comes flying out of the sky for a final downward attack. And why that's underwhelming to me is because what he described is literally Omni Slash. Omni Slash is a bunch of rapid succession attacks, and then Cloud jumps down from the sky with a final downward attack. It's not 100% what he described, but it's like 99%. And this is a small example of it, but it's part of what I've talked about in the past. That I feel like the voice actor should play the original game, because as we know from this interview, he has not played the original game. Had he played the original game, he would know that that limit break pretty much already exists. I also find it weird that, like, the people doing the interview didn't, like, take him to the side and let him know, like, off the record, like, hey, this kind of already exists. Do you want to, like, omit this from the interview? Because it's kind of, it's not embarrassing. I'm, like, tipping my fedora over here, like, oh, that already exists there, Cody. But it's embarrassing in the way that it shows, like, somewhat his lack of knowledge of the original game. Now that he's taken on a character like Cloud, we had to ask if there's a hero or villain he would love to voice at some point and already had one in mind. I grew up playing the Halo series. I still play Halo to this day. I'd love to voice a younger Master Chief in his origin game. Oh, and as for live action, that choice is easy. And as far as live action goes, I'd like first dibs to play Cloud in the Final Fantasy movie. Which I'm assuming he means Final Fantasy VII movie. So him playing a younger Master Chief is kind of interesting, but at the same time, like Master Chief has a very distinct voice, so I don't know if he could do like a, a different version of that voice, maybe, maybe not. Now as for a live action version of Cloud, I mean he has the, the height for it, Cloud's 5'7", he's 5'8", he has the build for it, he's an in-shape guy. But it would all come down to how he looks in the outfit, like with the cloud soldier outfit and like the yellow spiky hair. Like that's what it really come down to. 
Anyways, my dudes, that is pretty much the video. It ended up being longer than I thought it'd be, given that it was a shorter interview than the last one we had looked at. Speaking of the Burt Barron interview, at the end of that video, I mentioned how I'd like comicbook.com to do some more interviews with some of the voice acting cast. It seems like maybe they are. It's been a couple weeks since that video, since that interview happened. We have one with Cody Christian now. The one I want next is maybe like Tyler Hoagland. I want to see him talk about portraying Sephiroth for sure. And as always with this interview, I did leave out a couple of parts in case you want to go check out the interview yourself. There'll be some new things for you to read. Anyways, that's the video, my dudes. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We'll did more Final Fantasy VII Remake content. Turn on my notifications. Follow me on Twitter at the Dash and David. I'm a Discord. Links to my social networks are in the description and in the outro. Later, guys. Because Final Fantasy is awesome, by the way. I used to care what people thought, but now I care more. And nobody out here's got it figured out. So therefore, I've lost all hope of a happy ending, depending on whether or not it's worth it. So insecure, no one's perfect. We spend it with no shame. We blow that. Like old train, we in here. Like low gain, or leave it. Like old bang.